Burma, episode 4, A Train Journey. And sorry guys, I had said there would be five videos, but the director has told me there are going to be seven. You can't squeeze it all into five. This video is a train journey from Miyamo to Egotech Viaduct. Uh, Miyamo was now called Pien Olin. Hey ho to Mandalay. You can see the airport circled. Pui Lin in the center and then the Egotech Viaduct on the top right hand corner. Hey ho to Mandalay. A very modern international airport with four flights from China a week. No Western Airlines fly there. Uh, a bit of a white elephant, perhaps. We settle into our car for the one and a half hour drive to Miyamo, and there are a number of tolls to pay. Miyamo is a hill station and cool in the summer, and was used by the British for the summer holidays. The road is packed with trucks going to China. After a long, tiring day, we finally arrive at the governor's house at Pien Ulin, or Miyamo, and we check into room 202, which is quite comfortable. As it is late afternoon, we set out immediately for the National Gardens, passing some old English villas on the way. The gardens were laid out in 1915 by Lady Cup, one of the wives of the governor. One of the and the first thing we saw was some black swans. Because time was limited, we decided to go to the orchid garden, passing some cherry blossoms on the way. I'm going to ask our local orchid expert to give us a rundown on what we saw in the orchid garden. There are hundreds of species of orchids, thousands. Here in the garden there are many hundreds. So the ones we recognize were mostly oncidiums here. Uh, most plentiful were the cymbidiums. I think these are cymbidiums. These, these are. Later on we'll see um, lots of bandas, lots of dendrobiums, phalaenopsis, more cymbidiums. Very seldom is there a scent to a, an orchid. Cattleyas have a scent. This is a yellow poinsettia, which is quite unusual, very pretty. This is a Phalaenopsis, like we have at home, in our house and garden. And this is a fishtail palm with cherry blossoms in front, that was. We thank our local expert for identifying all the different species of orchids. Thank you. By now it was six o'clock and closing time, but the reflection from the fading light was beautiful of the pagoda in the lake. There were some flower dolphins, which you'll hear more about later, and then we're back at the hotel for dinner. The next morning, at 6.30, it's off to breakfast. After a very uncomfortable night, yeah. the bed was hard and the pillows were hard. Oh, and we didn't sleep very much. Get through the security. The breakfast was not that great either. So we do not recommend the governor's house. And then it's off to the station with our trusted driver at 7.30. The train was due to leave at 8.22, but the guide had to buy the tickets one hour before. <coughs> As the final stop for the train was almost nine hours away, people were buying up produce to take with them. The carriage was full of sacks of something, and the horse wouldn't smile. Left Mandalay at 4 a.m. and arrived at Bashu at 7.35. Our part of the journey, we left Hui Hu Lin at 8.22 and arrived at Noon Pang at 11.58. Our Danish friends from the 
night before had come up the day before for Man's Day we're going on to last year. Why does it start at 4 o'clock in the morning? We only take Ordinary fast did not look too comfortable, and there were three carriages. Upper class was a little more comfortable, and we didn't have so much produce and stuff to order. We stationed for a while, take pictures, and check out the driver, who looks a little wild, hanging out of his cabin, talking to his friends. And then the army arrived. So we feel pretty secure because there is fighting going on in the north of Burma. And they board with their guns, there he is getting his gun through the window, and their ammunition boxes. We settle into our seats, A2 and B2, which are quite comfortable. And things are looking up. Our neighbours across the way are a couple from Saskatoon in Canada. Very nice, very friendly. And on the other side, Nian Nian has a friend to chat to. There are still people hanging around on the track. And we assume they will get out of the way before we leave. The system is very old. The viaduct we're going to cross was built in 1903. And it kind of felt like it. noise many times as there are no railroad crossings anywhere on the system. It's selfish to give you an idea of what it's like rolling and bouncing around for three and a half hours. Quite tiring. Apart from seeing the viaduct, the other reason for the trip was to see the countryside and the people. We didn't see many people, but we did see a lot of the countryside, and it was not what I expected. No jungle, more like an English countryside, I thought. After a while we stopped at this station, which seemed to be the main one so far on the route, and we got off the train and wandered around the platform for a while. Um, we could have bought all sorts of goodies, but they probably wouldn't have been good for the stomach. The purpose of this part of the tour was to see the Goitek Viaduct. And if you look carefully, you can see it in the distance coming out now. There's a little silver blob in the distance. The viaduct was built between 1901 and 1903 by the Pennsylvania Steel Company and was the largest railway trestle in the world. It is 2,260 feet long and at the highest point, 300 meters. Quite some time to approach the bridge as we had to come down the hill in, in a circle and it looked scarier all the time. As you can see, there's not much between us and the drop. Survey of the viaduct, and I'm not sure whether that was because the driver was prudent or because he wanted the passengers to be able to take photographs. Below is the People Bridge. Uh, for those who can't afford the train, which by the way cost us eight dollars. And here we are thankfully over the bridge now and arriving at our destination. The down train is approaching and we have done 89 kilometers in three and a half hours. The trip from Mandalay to Lashio takes 15 hours and is 230 kilometers. Having done three and a half hours on the train, it's now a four-hour car ride back to Mandalay, fighting the trucks on the way. 
the road is narrow and there are many, many trucks. You see a last glimpse of the bridge from the road, more tolls, and fortunately we stopped for lunch on the way back. A lovely open air restaurant and the NDN is ordering our usual lunch. Not far off is a strawberry patch and we have a lovely strawberry drink recommended by her. Back in the car and off to Mandalay and finally we arrive at the Sedona Hotel after a long day.